Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we try to give you the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. Today's project is going to be working on Fabric Mate acoustical wall panels. The, t the wall that's right behind me here is where they had two very large monitors. Um, for one reason or another, they decided to remove those monitors, install two new monitors that were slightly smaller than the original monitors. So what happened was, is the new monitor uh, ends up coming to right, I don't know, let's just say right about here, okay? And then <clears throat> what happened was, is they, uh, you could see the drywall in the seam as before you used to have the monitor and then the seam was behind the the monitor. Now with the smaller monitor you can see the seams. So guess what? Request comes down the pipeline, hey we need you to reconfigure the uh, acoustical wall panels to be larger so that the seams are behind the new smaller monitors. Um, I started the project yesterday. What happened was is this unistrut frame that you're looking at, uh, do you see those black marks that are, that are sitting up there on the, um, the fabric? That's from me using my grinder and cutting off all the little nubs that were on the frame. I didn't have my camera here yesterday, so I wasn't able to get you the very before shot. I snapped a couple of photos, see if I can incorporate them into the video. But bottom line is you can kind of get a feel for what the uh, project uh, looked like before. Um, so this is what um, basically, other than me just snipping off that unistrut, this is what I'm dealing with uh, at the beginning of the project. Okay, the whole room is uh, vacuumed over by my, my workpiece. I vacuumed up all the dust that's here. I'm going to take some simple green and some paper towels that I have right here and I'm just going to clean up the the um, the frame. Okay, but I, this is how I did my cuts by the way. What I did was is I, I took some, some spring clamps. I, I have three of these uh, spring clamps. I got a couple right here and I took this uh, a box and some blue tape in an effort to kind of box in when I made my cuts. Now even though I took this precaution to kind of get my um, my the grinding because I used a grinder to take that off with really well look right here that still kind of bled through on that cut there and it kind of uh, you know what can I say it burned the fabric I don't think I could even luckily I'm replacing all this fabric anyways but the last thing you want to do is do your acoustic wall job and then put your frame on and do your cuts on the wall with with this. If you're gonna build the frame like this out of Unistrut, you gotta make your cuts like on the ground over cardboard or something like that. You can't, you certainly don't want to take the chance on destroying, if it was a finished product, your fabric. Luckily I'm re replacing all this fabric and even though I took a precaution here, still I really did not expect to damage the existing fabric. So um, uh, anyways, just lessons learned on that one there. Okay, the whole frame is as clean as I can get it using the Simple Green and Paper Towel product. Definitely I have some scoring that's uh, done permanently to the frame right where that cut was made there and also on the uh, opposite side right there. Now the frame that I'm installing uh, when I relocate it, it is going to be installed directly against the unistrut as tight as possible so that will pretty much be hidden uh, so that you're not going to see it anyways. Um, but just be aware of that if you're going to do any grinding or anything like that near your frames. Now I've already started taking the fabric off in this corner over here. Once you get it started it's really a slam dunk. Let's uh, do this piece right over here from scratch so I can show you how I do it. Okay, so basically you want to just start in a corner and you want to try to start pulling your fabric out like this. Once you, you actually got it started, then it's really not so bad. You don't even really need the tool or a tool. You can just use your hands. Uh, but basically all you're doing is just pulling it out and just being 
careful, uh, a little bit careful. If there's any material that's left in there, I'll use a uh, putty knife of some sorts to try to uh, get it out, or, or just roll that, roll that out with my roller. So I'm just going to continue on and with this and just rip out the uh, the whole thing. Now over here on this seam here, <laughs> the way that this is joined together with this one. They probably used one frame and they're joining two fabrics into this one frame. When I pull this up, it's possible that this fabric is going to come off. We'll see right now what happens. And if it does, it's okay. We'll just have to re-roll that, that fabric in there. But let's see what happens with the... Uh, it's actually... That fabric is staying in there. It's not taking it out. See that? It is loosening up a little bit, but it's, it's really not bad. Just give you a close-up of what it looks like to rip this off. Sometimes the frame, depending upon the installer, how well he secured it, could come loose. So sometimes I'll hold the frame while I'm pulling the fabric just to make sure the frame doesn't rip off at the same time. So I put a little, a little tension on the frame because I don't. I'm not the installer. I didn't install the frame. I'm just working on the system. So I don't know how well the original guy did. This white fabric is gets dirty real easy, so I want to make sure I don't touch it. So I'm going to really take a little caution here to try to keep my distance. There we go. I just want to show you an easy way to pull these things out. If they don't come out with just your, your hands, use a utility knife and score down inside the track here and usually that can help uh, clean up any little uh, stragglers just using a, a utility knife like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking the recore off the wall to expose the frame that needs to be moved. Okay, you can see how I've already pulled out this strip that was here. It's just sitting here on the ground. The installer certainly did not skimp on any of the staples. Look at there's a there's about a hundred staples in this piece so I mean he used it about every four inches so it's well anchored into the drywall. The recore material is a little bit of a pain because the way that he did the staples I actually was trying to leave the recore in place but look at the way the staples are set he's got them set in there real real deep uh, and then the recore just kind of fell off the wall. I think he put his um, air pressure too high when he did the recore. So anyways what we're going to do is I'll demonstrate how I do this. First we'll take this piece out here together because the whole top rail has to come down and I'll show you how I do that uh, just demonstrating this one as an example. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take our putty knife. This is just a five-in-one tool, so it's a fairly stiff uh, tool. And I'm just going to try to get under there. This is um, part of the kit that came with the fabric materials, so it's got a nice um, angle to it. So I can kind of get in there to help me uh, lift this off and, and leverage this out. Once the piece gets up big enough, then we can use this tool here, just a regular small crowbar and whatnot, and just kind of walk it through and just gently strip it off until the uh, staples are free. And then there's your piece right there. Now, this one here, we need to uh, relocate. So I gotta take out all the staples and destaple this so I can reuse it. Then uh, it's going to be installed uh, down here, kind of like this right here. All right, let me show you how to destaple 
your piece that you're working with here, okay? I've already taken these staples off. Now this tool here is the tool that is meant to, de to, to be used specifically to destaple, but when I, be these are landed so solidly that when I try to get my staple tool underneath between the plastic and the staple, it just, it's, it's, it really, it's, it doesn't work, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm taking my lineman's pliers, I am grabbing the back of the staple with about an inch to spare, I'll give you a nice close up there, and then I take the uh, lineman's pliers and I wiggle it like this in an effort to uh, lift that staple up off of there a little bit, uh, just enough to to get either the staple tool in or the lineman's pliers to grab that. Then what I do is I take some diagonal side cutters and I just uh, get as close as possible to my material and, I, and just so that the metal part doesn't go flying I just capture it with my hand and then I can just drop those on the workbench here and have a collection going. Then you just have this. You can either use this for this little remaining thing, the staple pulling tool, or lineman's pliers, or any type of pliers, even needle nose or whatever. But this is sticking out enough that I can go ahead and use this tool here. Make sure it doesn't go flying. And then there it is. There's your the um, the little staple uh, that comes out that's remaining. Okay, now I want to start constructing my frame. So you can see the piece that I have. Uh, drop down right there, so I want to start stapling that in because I know that piece is good to go approximately uh, where I want it landed. Alright, I have reconfigured the frame on this side to give you perspective. Here is the original frame. I still haven't disturbed this section over here yet. I've already removed uh, the bottom track here and uh, so forth, but to show you what this looks like. You see how you've got that unistrut and then you've got that um, outside uh, window going on over there and how they did the drop down. Now the configuration is like this here. Now I've already um, stapled this frame in and, and, and I have it cut but that is going to be a little bit hard to get the fabric in there. Uh, this So there's three sections of fabric. The top section, the middle section, and the bottom section. The bottom and the top both have a jog to it. The jogs is where you kind of can run into a problem when you're trying to roll out your material. Now you can see how I I did that so this way it should work but um, I would like to be able to confirm it before I move forward. So what I've got is I've got all the old fabric sitting just sitting on the ground over here so I'm gonna cut up a couple of pieces so I can do some uh, testing because I don't do this every day I wanted to do a, some testing so I took some of the old fabric I cut out a square here and I put a square a small section down here at the bottom and you can see how my, my uh, the cuts and the frame the way that I built it how I plan on doing my transition so there is a small wrinkle right there but the TV is, first of all, uh, that's going to be behind the TV. I tried my darndest to get that taunt, and I don't have this section of the wall attached. I think if I did, I could pull the fabric a little bit that way to pull that wrinkle out a little bit. But anyways, um, all in all, I am uh, pretty happy with the technique that I'm doing here, and I think that the, the frame will be just fine with uh, this uh, strategy. All right, we have our frame built from this side of the room all the way over to right there on the top frame and on the bottom frame right there. So we just have to do this section here uh, on our next uh, work day. But it's the end of the day, so we're going to wrap it up for now. The frame is completely built. So this side is all established. And then going across here, this side over here I just completed. So the frame portion of the project is all completed. And the hardest part of the job is doing all of your seams. Getting all of your seams to make sure that the fabric will flow as intended the way that you wanted to. So here's just a close-up shot of the, um, 
of the seams just to show you how I did it and how I um, was able to uh, m make all that happen. So now what I need to do is I need to, uh, I have some leftover insulation or uh, the, yeah, the insulation material there that came out from, from underneath but now I've raised that up so those are no longer accurate sizes and uh, same thing on the top I, I took that uh, and brought the support bar down so I need to figure out exactly how I'm going to work with my my insulation my recore material is different let me show it to you okay so this is the recore that I purchased from the fabric mate website this is one inch thickness uh, recore that is two feet by going four feet that way um, I did not plan on redoing the whole wall uh, by the way the the insulation product that this contractor used ahead of me this stuff is so soft that when I try to use the staple gun to put the uh, to adhere the um, his insulation into the wall the my staple gun was going directly through his insulation oh here here's a perfect example see see all those all those holes that was me trying to get my my staple gun to throw some staples in there to hold that on the wall and it was just puncturing through so what I had to do was kind of unsafe but what I had to do was take my my gun and you see this uh, lever right here this is the the safety lever for right up there I have the air that's not connected right now but I'd have to hold this while I was depressing the trigger with like like this in order to shoot for the insulation what a pain in the butt I've worked with this insulation in the past this insulation is no problem let me show you so when I take my my gun here and I go to put it uh, up against it see how the gun depresses and it allows the 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 trigger to um, to be executed so when I go like this it depresses and I can actually pull the trigger so um, and I don't have to sit there and hold the safety in like that and then to press the trigger so I gotta work with the with the insulation in case you've never done this before the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine where I want my piece I want this piece to come down here and occupy this space right here so I'm going to take a couple of measurements uh, just to make sure that I've got uh, solid uh, footing here so that is eight and a quarter, eight and an eighth, eight and an eighth. So I'm going to cut it eight and an eighth by twenty-six and a half. All right, so twenty-six and a half by eight and an eighth. I can't do twenty-six and a half this way because twenty-six and a half is like that. So I have to go 26 and a half like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 26 and a half. I'm going to put my utility knife in there exactly at 26 and a half. Take that off to the side. There's my knife. I'm going to take my straight edge here, put it against that, that, that. Make sure I have a nice firm grip here. And Go ahead and make several passes with the utility knife. I, have to, I might have to change the blade out. Okay, I've got a brand new blade on there. Let's go for that again. All right, I'm going to finish it off with this uh, utility exacto knife. And that should work fine. There we go. We're down. Okay, let's see how we do. Go in the bottom here against that. As a matter of fact, that fits so tight, I do not even need to put a staple in there. We're perfectly fine. And I'm just going to continue that procedure all the way down until I get to the other side. I just want to kind of show you my process on how I do it. Okay, this is where we stand. You can see how I've filled in with the brand new recore material all on the bottom. The top side, I used the leftover material from the project and filled in the gap with the existing uh, product that was originally installed on the wall. That's all completely done. 
The last two cavities that I have to fill are this cavity and this cavity over here. And guess what? I have two full sheets of ReCore left. But the two she the sheet that I have is not big enough to fill in this entire area. It is big enough, tall enough to go from the top seam to the bottom, but it's not big enough to go left left to right. There's going to be about a three inch spacer piece. So I have a choice of where I want the spacer piece. Do I want my spacer piece here? Or do I want my spacer piece here? In reality, it really shouldn't make a difference. Once the fabric goes on, it'll all be buried. But in case there's a going to be, a, it's going to be noticeable, I'm going to put my seam here because that way when the monitor goes on the wall, this seam here will be behind the monitor. So if so, since I'm the installer, I'm working with the full sheet, and I know what the overall project is, and I have a choice of where I where I put the full sheet. Do I put it on the left or do I start it on the right? I'm going to start it on the right because that makes the most sense for the project. All right, now you can see all my recoil material. I filled it in here. You see where I put the seam uh, exactly where I told you I wanted to put it on the inside portion so that would be hidden uh, just in case there's that is revealed at all when we go to um, put our fabric on. Now you can see that I've already stapled in the um, the recore so I've got several uh, inch and a half staples uh, all the way across on all my new recore material because it accepts the staples um, properly. The material that's um, the original I did not uh, put any staples in that material because it's just so soft and brittle. Um, but that's it. We are good to go. We're, we can actually start putting our fabric on. So I need to uh, clean the floor up so in case the uh, fabric drops I don't want it to get it dirty. Uh, what I do is uh, I raise up my ceiling towels and I put some cardboard underneath there so when I roll that joint in I don't have to worry about the uh, the ceiling towel rubbing against my hand and absolutely annoying me. So I've already got that prepped. So the wall is uh, prepped for the for starting with the material, the fabric material that we're going to put on the wall. All right, everyone. I did not have my camera with me yesterday, and you can see the progress that I made. We still have to put this bottom piece of fabric in which we'll do today. Um, the hardest part of the whole uh, piece that I fabric that I did yesterday was the jog right there that I'm zooming in on. That section there was very difficult for me to do. But the way that it, what happened was it was wrinkling in the corner. And when we do this section down here, because we have another jog on the right and left hand side that we have to do right there. And when we do that, I'll show you exactly how I do it, but I'll tell you right now that what I did was is I took my utility knife and I used the back of the blade, not the sharp portion of the blade, in an effort to push the fabric uh, to where I want it to go without cutting the fabric. And we'll do this section down here together with this knife.
All right, you saw me roll in roughly the entire uh, project for this bottom portion. And now that I've done that, I'm just looking over to make sure that I've got good overlap all the way around. And I do, and I'm, and I'm good with everything. Now here's that jogged corner that I told you I knew was going to be uh, difficult and you can see that wrinkle right there. We're going to work the, the, that wrinkle out and there's also one on the other side. Let's see if we can find it. it. Might be hidden there. Yeah, it's hidden. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the project here from this top section, come down come down around and come around this way and then we'll start bringing just start working the project this way so I'm gonna give you a nice close-up here on how I detail this out All right, there you go. That's about the best I'm going to get that corner, but that's pretty good.
Okay, here you go. You can see the bottom piece here is completely done. I'm just going to do some final cleanup here. But uh, the most difficult, challenging portions was right there. And although there's a small wrinkle there, uh, the average person I don't think is going to pick that up. It's just, it's not eye catching at all. There's the wrinkle on this side here. I think I got this one a little bit better. But uh, all in all, I think this is a very, very, very successful project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my entire mess here. I've got my shop back here. Let me get this floor cleaned up and I'll give you the final, final shots. All right, so here's your project. Just looking at it from outside so I could give you a full shot because when I get in closer in the room, you can't see it. I just want to point out how I always try to leave the space as clean or cleaner than when I first arrived. So the floor is completely spotless right now. So uh, the users can't say that I left trash behind. And here is your final product. And I think that we have an absolute home run with this project. Once the large monitors go on the wall, they are going to hide those seams. And you're not going to see any of this framing uh, unistrut type product. You're not even going to see this frame or that seam right there because the monitors we designed it are going to be slightly larger in all regards. So the users aren't even going to see that imprint. Um, even the portion uh, where I had like a, a little bit of an imperfection, that little wrinkle right there, all that uh, should be completely hidden by the monitors. So that is going to wrap up this episode. Smash that like button down. Subscribe to my channel. I have other videos that go into great more detail on this FabricMate acoustical wall system on how you um, lay out your track, do all your cuts, do your 45 straight runs, uh, flush, uh, reveals, all these different types of things I go into. You can check out my channel, search for keywords acoustic and uh, fabric mate and those videos should pop up and I'll catch you on the flip side.